How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donahue here again. This time we're going to take a look at acid-base reactions, but really just kind of basic acid-base reactions. So our objectives will be to predict the products of various acid-base reactions and identify any spectator ions. So first off, why do acids and bases even react with each other? Let's start there. Well, it turns out whenever you have an H plus and an OH minus, they really like hanging out together. In fact, when they meet up, they'll never be split apart right it's a match made in heaven so for example in sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid when they react well what happens is the sodium hydroxide is really going to break up into separate ions and we're going to end up with the na plus ion and the oh minus ion and the hcl is also going to split up into h plus and cl minus and then given the opportunity for this h plus to hang out with the oh minus when they get together, they're going to stay together. So that H plus ends up bonding and you make a water molecule. And that's the whole reaction. That's what's going on, right? We start with NaOH, we react it with HCl, and it gives us water and sodium chloride. Neutralization and salts. Neutralization is when acids and bases mix. You make water, right? You form a salt and water, and water is neutral. So you call it neutralization. So same example, sodium hydroxide and HCl, you end up with water and a salt, right? So I have my base, I react it with my acid, and I always will end up with water and a salt. Another reason why acids and bases react, one of the products that they make is a gas. So when reactants mix together, one of the new combinations forms a gas which can then leave the solution. This drives the reaction forward. So an example would be like hydrochloric acid with sodium sulfide. Well, it turns out when the H's hang out with the sulfur to make H2S, well, that's a gas. And if I have a beaker where I'm mixing these things and I'm forming a gas, that gas can get out of town and it's gone. So it's going to drive the reaction forward. So here's a classic kitchen chemistry example that you could probably do at home. If you have some vinegar and some baking soda, when you mix those two together, the acid is the baking or is the vinegar and the baking soda is the base. And when they come together, one of the products they form is carbon dioxide gas. And you can see that in the form of bubbles. So you add some vinegar and you can see all these bubbles. All those bubbles are CO2, carbon dioxide. So a neat thing you can do is like, a, you know, a fake kind of magic trick. So as I'm adding more vinegar to the baking soda, I'm making more CO2. And that beaker is going to fill up with carbon dioxide, right? Careful not to overflow it. Now to prove that there's carbon dioxide in there, because you're looking at it, you're like, I don't see anything. It's just, you know, air. How do I know it's carbon dioxide? Well, I can pour the air off of that beaker into another beaker and I'm going to be careful not to pour any of the liquid out I just want to tilt it over the other beaker so the air can flow out carbon dioxide is heavier than the rest of the air so it will actually sink into the beaker and displace the air so now I got an empty empty beaker but it's full of co2 so when I pour it over a candle it smothers the flame I think it's pretty cool so the overall equation is given right here we have well that's actually the wrong one that's not it's, it's, sorry i got h it's acetic acid it's c h three c o o h you could do it with hydrochloric acid but you probably don't have that at home and when you mix it together you're making this carbonic acid but the thing about carbonic acid is it's unstable and it will decompose giving off carbon dioxide gas so the overall molecular equation when we do this looks like this, CH3COOH, acetic acid, and baking soda, NaHCO3, will give us sodium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide. So let's talk about net ionic equations. When we have a strong acid and a strong base reacting together like this, we can look at the molecular equation where we're showing what molecules we got, in this case, sodium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid, and we're gonna make sodium chloride and water. Well, let's start with the complete ionic equation. So what the complete ionic equation is, is we're looking at all of the ions that are there. 
So NaOH, when it's aqueous, isn't actually a molecule of NaOH. It splits up. Same thing with HCl. We end up with these ions in solution. And if we take a look at our products, there's a similar thing going on. The H2O is stuck together, but the sodium and the chloride are separate ions. So when we have a complete ionic equation, we're looking at all of the ions. So let's rewrite it. It's really going to be this Na plus plus OH minus plus H plus plus Cl minus gives me H2O plus Na plus plus Cl minus. All right, so it's going to look like this. That's our complete ionic equation. It's got all the ions there. This, not super helpful all the time, but if we look at it, we can get the net ionic equation, which will be super helpful. So net ionic equations are only going to show what has changed from before to after, what's actually reacting. What do you mean, Mr. Johnny? Well, some ions don't do anything. They're just spectator ions. So if we take a look, are there any spectator ions in this reaction? I'll give you a hint, there are. Are there ions at the beginning that are there at the end and nothing's changed to them? Yeah, if we take a look, Na plus is on both sides as Na plus. That's, that didn't change. Cl minus, same deal. That didn't change at all. Those are just spectators. So if we're taking a look at it written out, well, I would cross off Na plus and Cl minus from both sides because if they're on both sides of the equation, they cancel out. You don't have to put it there. And what are we left with? We're left with H plus and OH minus making an H2O. So my net ionic, let's see, I got Na plus on this side and that side. I got Cl minus on both sides. The way I'm going to write it is going to be H plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous is going to give me an H2O in the liquid state. Spectator, ugh, spectator ions would be that sodium ion as well as that chloride ion. So all strong acids and strong bases will neutralize to have this net ionic equation, right? Because they ionize completely. So they all break up into H plus and OH minus. So whenever you see like what's the net ionic equation for this strong acid and strong base reaction, this is it. So why does this reaction occur in this scenario? It's because we're making water. Summarize, what happens when you, when you mix an acid and a base in Y? And can you determine net ionic equations for acid-base reactions? I hope so. All right, get back.